Yeah, all right, cut. We did the skateboard thing before. Onwards. Hello and welcome to vlog 36. Today we're going to do a deep dive into the lyrics behind our album song Won't Back Down. Um, for those of you who haven't come across this before, we just put out a 172 musician album. It's kind of ska, punk, folk, protest, skate, pop, admin core and all the profit skater charity. So for those of you that haven't heard of us or are thinking what the hell is Andy B in the world or isn't Won't Back Down a Tom Petty song, um, here's a little clip of our tune. That's us, and those awesome lyrics are written and sung by a longtime friend in America, Karen Roberts of Chase Long Beach and Unicorn Ejection. So, what better way to delve into those and see how we know each other than via this very geeky segue into a video call? Hey! Hey! How's it going? So, for those that don't know, this is Karen, previously of Chase Long Beach and out of Unicorn Ejection, and we've known each other since pretty much 2007 when Fun Angle uh, recorded out there. But do you want to tell people how we know each other? Yeah, um, super fun. Actually, Tom, who you already, you know, just did a vlog with, yeah, uh, had messaged me or Chase Long Beach, but I was the one who responded to everything. And at the time, our van had broken down and we were on this campaign to try and get all of our 10,000 MySpace friends <laughs> to give us one dollar to MySpace. buy a new van. <laughs> and uh, you guys never gave us a dollar, by the way. But really? Tom messaged us <laughs> uh, about that. And we just started chatting and it was funny because I guess you guys had gone through a similar experience recently and it was just really kind of fun getting to know this other band from across the pond. And then he was like, hey, we're coming out to record this album for like a month in Fullerton, which is, you know, 20 minutes away from Long Beach. And, uh, and then we were like, let's meet up. And then a couple of days of you guys being in the U.S., you were at a zebra head show at House of Blues Anaheim, the original House of Blues Anaheim, right. R.I.P. And um, we met up there, and then we all were drinking, having a good time, and then you guys were like, come back to the, the studio, come back to the lockout, and then we just drank more at the lockout, watched you guys play some songs, and became best friends, and yeah. it was like every day for that month that you guys were here, we were all hanging out. And you guys taught us Edward Forty Hands, the, the drinking game. Oh my god. But I did it with a bottle of tequila and a bottle of uh, tequila mix. And I was, yeah. I, I didn't remember anything beyond finishing those bottles. I forgot that you did that with <laughs> the tequila and the tequila mix too. I just remembered the worst part, I think, about that night was because we had done it in the lockout and there was only the one bathroom everyone had to pee at the same time when we were finally done with our our 40s or our tequila yeah. and it was like the one bathroom so i think all the guys were like running outside in the parking lot it Good was times. so fun i definitely can't do that anymore no. so <laughs> yeah two shots and i'd be gone like, yeah. especially yeah. after lockdown all right, real quick, for anyone that's outside the States or isn't sure what a 40 is or what Edward's 40 hands is, a uh, 40 is a big bottle of beer that you can buy in the States. And uh, Edward 40 hands is when you tape one of each of those to both of your hands and you've got to finish them both before you like to take them off or go for a week. It's a fun game. No, it's, it's, it, was, it was so much fun. Like Both our bands were totally on the same wavelength, so it was really good fun hanging out. We, uh... So uh, Karen had a car that, that um, I don't even know what car it was, but Karen had a car that um, I drove around the car park like I'd stolen it. Um, it and we fine. accidentally crashed, uh, I think it was me and Tom or me and Sky crashed BMXs into the side of it. I don't know if that was on purpose or whatever, but... I'm sure it was, probably. because that was like the thing with that car, like it just had a rich tradition of everyone destroying it. Like I remember one night uh, at a Chase Long Beach show, it was Tristan, our trumpet player's birthday. Somebody, a fan had made him a cake. And I think somebody got one bite out of that cake before it ended up getting smashed on the entire windshield of my car. And then I had to try and drive home with a whole cake on the windshield. <laughs> I've got a photo somewhere of Ed and Ash. I think you're driving around with your car in the car park. The car park at the studio is massive. And uh, you're driving around and Ed and Ash are just surfing on top of the car. And the roof's like this. And yeah. Yep. It wasn't a loved car. <laughs> it didn't last much longer after that, but you know, it, it got some good, some good years out of it, or at least some good memories. Yeah, that's it. And then you, and then you guys came to the UK and toured with us back in twenty and twenty twenty eight, I think. 
Two thousand eight. In two thousand seven, I think actually. Oh, might really? Have yeah, been the been. first. Yeah, it was. It was two thousand seven. Was the first one in um, fall winter. I think yeah. we left on Thanksgiving here in the U.S. and then. We all got really sick in the UK in the cold. Oh yeah, and, I think uh, I did. I drive you guys. You did drive. Uh, yeah, us I was driving you guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a yeah, break yeah, yeah. from my lot for a couple of weeks. <laughs> and then that was the tour that we specifically did with you guys. And then we came back and did two more tours after that. And I think we just played like one or two shows on those tours with you guys. Probably Camden um, Scarfest, I expect. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, the second tour we played um, at the Underworld, and there was that huge ska fest. Yes. Yeah, because yeah. it was it was Adam and us lot that used to put that on in the underworld once a year. Yeah. Actually, well, that's yeah. what that's what I sent you that picture of. Um, there's a bit in one of the vlogs recently. I think the one with uh, with Tom. Fun. Yeah, well, and um, yeah. we're looking across the stage, and there's uh, a very young Karen, like just I'm inside, creeping in the back, watching from the side of the stage. That's I love that with the so the underworld stage. If you've never been there, is a triangle, and at the back there's a walkway that goes to the backstage. But most of the bands that are playing that night sort of hang out so you kind of get like a back line of people it was kind of fun so then obviously we're talking about um this album and karen sung the song won't back down and wrote the lyrics but we actually recorded it back in 2017 when i was out in america with another andy andy screen from king touch revenge what do you remember about that day um <clears throat> other than we were late well, you but that's the thing. It's, it's L.A. You're allowed to be late because everyone's always late. I mean, I think I was still probably like 10 minutes late. You guys just beat us on the late train that day. You know, <laughs> like we were all late. You were just a little bit more late. Um, I just remember that we it was so long ago. That's the funny thing. I just remember us having a really good time and a few laughs like in our old rehearsal space. And the funny thing that really cracked me up was that Ashley and Brad lived together at the time but they both drove separately from Riverside <laughs> and it was like why didn't you guys carpool together like that didn't make any sense to me I, f I think because Brad left early we I think, I think Brad was, was off to work I think yeah I think because he yeah. yeah we definitely recorded him first mm -hmm. it was just a funny day like we we, we we were late we had three things to do so it was yeah Ashley and Brad playing bass and you singing and screening was running around sticking stickers to things and filming it was just really good and there was a metal band practicing down the hall oh yeah which i'd forgotten right. about until i mixed and i was listening to your vocal mic when i was doing the final mix and i was like what is that and i it just as soon as i heard it i was like oh yeah there was a metal. i remember we were like let's record vocals in a metal band as soon as we set the mic up for you just started kicking off for the rest of the afternoon we were like Awesome. So that's in there. It's appropriate for this song, you know? Like, yeah. It just goes with the tone of it. It's fine. A little bit you can throw of, some metal yeah. back there. No one will know. Bit of anger in the um, background. <laughs> well, we thought it would be fine to, to practice because this is like the practice studio where we had like a lockout, you know, that we rented every month and shared with a bunch of other bands. And usually no one's in there during the day. So we were like, it'll be fine. It's 2 p.m. on a Wednesday no one's gonna come down and then all of a sudden this random metal band yeah, <laughs> yeah. so that's on the album that literally is in there i it, i don't think i took it out at the start of the end but it, in between all the bits it's in there i was like it's part of the rich tapestry of the, uh, of the travel it's good fun but that was one of the first bits of travel so you were probably in the first like and it was the first thing we did in america so you're probably in the first 20 people of the album yeah. at that point, which is kind of cool. I actually was one of the lucky few who got to sign the guitar before it disappeared. Yes. Well, we've, <laughs> we've tracked it down. It went to... We were the first ones. Yes. Yeah. Well, Josh, we left it with Josh when we left. Uh, we had dinner with Josh and Chris Luca when we were in New Jersey back to drive through Manhattan and go home. And they gave it to the Holophonics. The Holophonics gave it to another band. Oh, I've forgotten their name now. God damn it. I spoke to them literally a few days ago. I've just forgotten their name. Um, um, they actually that band sent me a picture of it, and it still had the signatures on it. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. This guitar has been living more and traveling more than the rest of us have <laughs> like, over a year. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's genuinely been on tour a couple of. Hello, future Andy here, just saving you from me going on about the guitar for what will feel like an eternity, trust me. Um, so I shall move you straight forward to where we actually start talking about the song. Right, the song we did then is obviously a nice politically charged song, which is something we quite like here in this band. So do you want to tell us about the lyrics that you wrote? Well, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but there was this guy who was in charge of our country who recently just <laughs> left. Thank God. 
Um, no, no, it's just really funny because I was really glad that the album, I kept saying to myself, I was like, I just hope it comes out before Trump leaves office so my song is relevant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, and it did, so that was cool. Um, a few, a couple weeks, but I'll take it, you know? <laughs> but it was weird because... Even just in 2017, writing those lyrics, and it had been a year of him, or, you know, a few months, I guess, at that point, being in office and how awful it was then. And then hearing the song when it came out, you know, just recently, I was like, wow, this is still totally relevant and resonates completely. Like, nothing changed. He just got worse and worse and worse over those four years. And now we're living... I mean, our country is so divided and it's because of this rhetoric and basically bullshit that he put on the airwaves that he convinced people, manipulated people to believe that isn't true. And that's really kind of just the basis of the song. It it just blows my mind. And anybody can believe in the shit that he has been spewing and then going out and then we see like the insurrection at the Capitol. Yeah. And then he got away with it. Again, you know, and it's just, it's devastating. And it's like, it's devastating as an American who wants equality and justice and freedom. Yeah. And like the things that we are told that we're supposed to have in this country, that our constitution says, that our Bill of Rights says, and somebody can just come in and completely destroy that. And the whole system that we have in place of our government just doesn't matter, you know, and I think it's really crazy that it's like us as Americans who've been living with this, it's so difficult. But then I listen to the rest of the album and there's at least two other songs written by British people about Donald Trump. And I'm just like, it's crazy to me that it can affect so many other people, that the rest of the world is seeing how nuts this guy is and that we're allowing him to be in power still and we can't do anything that's the scary part is that it's like no matter how many times we tried to stop him we tried to impeach him he just gets away with it yeah again and again utterly bonkers i mean it's been it's been i mean it's massive news here and i'd say it's definitely had an effect on a lot of countries like that kind of well we the video we just put out is one of those British, you know, British singer songs on our album that is still about Trump. It was written about originally back in 2017 as well, like yours, but it was written about Charlottesville. And when I was talking to Ben about making the video, he was like, well, I guess we cover the 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 thing with Capitol building recently because it's the same stuff over like once again, all these. So all in all those years, it's the same story It's just as relevant. And obviously Aaron. So. Aaron did uh, Things Change is from a band called Make It Better Later, who you guys also played with over here. Bless them. Um, yeah. And that's, yeah, so they'd written a song back in their, their days called The Pirate Song. And that was a um, political love letter. Song. Yeah, it was a political love letter to, to Bush. And so this one, he used as a chance to rewrite that letter, but for Trump. And obviously when we say love letter, yeah. we mean a flame and fuck you. I was honestly I was so glad that you came to me with this opportunity because I really felt I needed to say something about Trump and about everything that had been going on like I had all of these words and and things that I wanted to get out on paper and I would have wanted to put into a song and it was like such perfect timing that you actually came to me and then this was the song that you brought me you brought me this music and I was like this is it this is my chance because like, I've just been in unicorn injection where we sing about, you know, having sex with two guys at once. And it's like, these are legitimately our songs. It's like a big joke, you know, and I, I can't write about anything real or political or like something that I would have back in the day with Chase Long Beach, you know, unicorns just more of like a, a just a, for fun. So sure. we are a party band, you know, as we like to call it. And, you know, we wouldn't write about something so serious. So it was really, thank you for giving me that outlet because I really appreciated that because you gave me that opportunity when I really wanted it, so. It's definitely a rioty song and it's like, it's well suited. But yeah, you you had to be on there. Like it was, it was, well, I think you were easily amongst the very first people I asked to do it. uh, Yeah. And um and and also we got to do it in Fullerton, uh like the recording, which is kind of rad because that's kind of how we all met in the day and the Fandango recorded and 
actually we even screen- went to sidebar afterwards. yeah yeah that's it yeah we did we went to sidebar and uh yeah it's it's all part of the same like that same story which is really nice and uh yeah i look forward to coming back to fullerton again it's mad how much politics can shape us internationally and how we can be so divided within a country yet so united with points of view from people from other countries across the pond. Um, it's definitely fascinating and something we find really inspiring here for lyrics in Andy B in the World. Anyway, for fans of Chase Long Beach, this next bit is 100% for you. Well, I mean, it's not necessarily something that we're like vamping yet because <laughs> there's no real detail, but I can confirm that sometime in 2022 we're thinking probably somewhere in the summer that chase long beach will come back for one more show because every time we just we did a show at the beginning of 2020 for um one of our favorite venues and somebody who gave us our start um he had sold the venue so we came back and that was the first time in years we had played a show but the second that we do one show everyone's like oh my God, are you guys coming back? And it's like, no, 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 no. So we have to be like very, very specific. One show. Um, But it will be Chase Long Beach's 20th anniversary in 2022. So we decided, okay, we'll come back. We'll do one more show. We have no other details, obviously, because there are no live shows. And unfortunately, a lot of our venues that we know have not made it already through the pandemic um so it's really sad so we'll see what's even left by the time this is over um but that's still a ways away there will definitely be more but we're also um apparently i had told you recently that um some a fan wanted to do a documentary about us so there would be a chase long beach documentary that we're supposed to begin this summer awesome so that's something else to look forward to the people who still Find Chase Long Beach relevant. <laughs> okay, that's all for this week. Thank you so much to Karen for joining. It was lovely to catch up over Zoom. And I hope you enjoy these deep dives. I know they can be a long watch, but hopefully for those of you that enjoy seeing the story behind the songs, it scratches that itch. Anyway, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Please do comment and let us know what you think. I know it's annoying when YouTubers say this, but please do like and subscribe if you enjoy what we do. It helps us get seen by more people and that can only be a good thing as we move forwards. Anyway, take care of yourselves. Please do stay safe and we shall catch you in the next one. Peace out. Big love. Anyway, <laughs> it's been awesome. Thank you so much, Karen. And uh, we'll, we'll catch you soon.